Okay. Oh my gosh. Well, good morning. How is everybody? Good. It is so good to see all of y'all here this morning. If at any point you can't hear me, I will try to project. You just get up and you shift your chair. Or if the sun gets too warm or something and you want to move in the sun, you just shift around. Um, but it is so good to be out here in God's creation and to be able to worship together in the pumpkin patch. I just think this is so fun. And we turned the temperature down just a little bit for you today <laughs> from the last time, so you are welcome. <laughs> um, if you need anything, we have hand sanitizer, an extra communion, individual cup, uh, masks, and also the offering basket. So if you're looking for any of that, it is all over here on the, on the table. Uh, so, for your convenience. Uh, if you are worshiping online with us today, uh, we wanna let you know that the bulletin is posted to the top of our Facebook page. And so you can go there, you can register your attendance and let us know uh, that you are with us today. We are so excited that you are here. Just a reminder that tonight, uh, the youth will be meeting. So that is sixth through 12th graders, anybody. Uh, is welcome to come. We're going to play a game, have a discussion, uh, and plan some service projects for the future. So anybody in 6th through 12th grade is welcome to come and join Bill and I uh, tonight at 6 for youth. Uh, I also want to make sure that you all know, and you probably do because you're here this morning, that every single week on Thursday or Friday, we are sending out a weekly email. And it is everything you could ever need to know about worship on Sunday, about meetings that are coming up, about Bible study, whatever it is, all of that is in that weekly email. So if you are not receiving it and you would like to be, uh, you either need to call me or Lorraine in the church office and we'll get you set up. A couple of people had it going to their spam box. So we wanna make sure that you know you should be getting an email every single week with all of that information in it. Also, just a quick reminder that if you are a member of the finance committee, we are gonna meet outside right after worship today to talk through next year's budget. So you can just kind of rearrange your chairs uh, and we will meet out here together. So this morning, as we begin this time of worship, we are gonna open uh, by singing together Spirit of the Living God. And even if you don't have your bulletin today, the words will come to you uh, as we sing them. And because we are outside and spread apart, we can sing together uh, loudly this day. So would you join us? <laughs> Pray. 
gracious and holy God, for all of the many blessings that you have poured out upon us and all of the many blessings that we are sure are yet to come, we give you thanks. We thank you for our ability to be out here worshiping in your creation this day, to hear the birds that are singing and the trains that are going by, to feel the cool breeze and to believe and to know that fall is here. God, we are so grateful for all of the many ways that you show up in our lives each and every day. And we pray that we would never take those for granted, but know that they are gifts from you. God, be in this time of worship this day. May it be pleasing and acceptable in your sight and glorifying to you above all else. And it's in the name of your son, Jesus, our Savior, that we pray. Amen. This morning, I want to invite you to join me in affirming our faith using something that is very familiar to us, an affirmation that we use often as we stand up in worship and we remember all that God has done and all that we believe God to be. And so this day, I want you to join me as we recite together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join me in reading from John chapter 6, verses 48 through 51. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of this world is my flesh. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Would you join us this morning as we sing together, Fill My Cup, Lord. <laughs> Thank you. Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup. Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord, come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make me Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, we give you thanks for these moments in time that we are able to worship together. We pray that every word that is spoken, every song that is sung, every thought that is thought in our minds, every feeling that is felt in our hearts would be from you and from nothing else. 
Glorify this time, O oh God, and use it for your goodness and your will. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Friends, I hope that we are people who are grateful. Who no matter the circumstances, in every place where we find ourselves, in the beginning of every morning, in the close of every day, I hope that we can find something for which we can give God thanks. In fact, this morning, I want you to take just a second and I want you to turn to somebody near you and I want you to share one thing that you are grateful for today. It doesn't have to be monumental or earth-shaking or life-changing. It can be something really small that is meaningful to you. But I just want you to turn to one of your neighbors and to say, I am grateful for, and then fill in the blank. All right, just take just a second. Very good. I hope that we know as we come together to celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion, that it was born out of Jesus's Last Supper. That Last Supper that he would eat with his disciples before he would take that long journey to the cross. But it was also born out of a practice that dates back long before Jesus's feet ever touched this earth. It came, of course, from the Jewish Israelite meal of the Passover. That is what the disciples thought that they had gathered to celebrate on that last supper night before Jesus would shift that meal into something of different significance. The Passover celebration, in case we have forgotten or just don't remember this day, is of course the remembrance of what God did on behalf of God's people, the Israelites, who the Old Testament book of Exodus reminds us were enslaved in horrible conditions in the country of Egypt, who day after day after day found themselves working in back-breaking labor being required to make more bricks than was humanly possible in a day, being beaten and whipped and scorched by the sun, miserable in their plight and wishing for any sort of hope or freedom or way out. But ever in their midst and in ours, God created a way where there seemed to be no way. And he laid the groundwork through his servant, Moses. And God asked the Israelites to prepare a meal with herbs so bitter, it would turn their stomach at the memory of Egypt. And a perfect lamb that would be sacrificed and that blood taken and spread across their doorframe to symbolize God's protection and instructions that they were to eat the meal ready with their loins girded and their sandals on their feet because sometime during the night Pharaoh the great leader of Egypt was finally going to give the go-ahead and God was going to free God's people and that is what happened. So quickly that the yeast in their bread didn't even have time to rise. And they danced their way to freedom through the Red Sea. This is the meal that Jesus' disciples believed they had come to celebrate on that night before his death. 
and I can't help but wonder if they too had a tradition like the one that has now evolved and come to be for our Jewish brothers and sisters many years later. Even today, each time in those spring months that they gather to remember that blessed Passover, there is a tradition that they participate in. A song that they sing each and every year around the Passover table called Dai Anu. Would you say that with me? Dai Anu. And the literal translation of that word is it would have been enough. It would have been enough. You see, what they do is after they have eaten the traditional Passover Seder meal, they sit together and someone calls out in gratitude one of the great deeds that God has done. If God had just brought us out of Egypt, and then they all respond, die anu, it would have been enough. If God had just executed justice upon the Egyptians, Dianu, it would have been enough. If God had just split open the sea for us, it would have been enough. If God had just led us through on dry land, Dianu, it would have been enough. If God had just provided for our needs in the wilderness for those 40 years, Dianu, it would have been enough. If God had just fed us that manna that rained down from heaven and cured us of our hunger, Dianu, it would have been enough. And the song that they sing goes like this. Die, die, a new, die, die, a new, die, die, a new, it would have been enough. Did you sing that with me today? Die, die, a new, die, die, a new, die, die. I wonder if long before that song was written down in the ninth century, if there was already a little bit of that tradition ingrained in that Passover meal. I wonder if they went around and out of gratitude they recounted for one another all that God had done throughout the course of history that they had to be grateful for, all that God had done that had brought them to this beautiful place of being able to dine with God himself in Jesus. And I wonder if they called out, if God had just given us the prophets to sustain us as we wandered in exile and we strayed, Die Anu, it would have been enough. If God had just sent us John the Baptist to prepare the way, Die Anu, it would have been enough. If God had just sent us Jesus to live among us and to teach us so much, Die Anu, it would have been enough. And I can just imagine Jesus sitting there as they're going around the table and they're sharing these things that they have to be grateful for, the mighty ways that God has been at work. And then it's Jesus' turn. And I wonder if he begins to share in gratitude. And for that moment, time just seems to stand still. And I wonder if he shares something akin to what Landon read to us this morning. You have so
so much to be grateful for in all that God has given you. And surely if God had even just given you one of those things, it would have felt like more than enough, more than you could ever deserve. But God is about to do something greater. Like that manna that fell for our ancestors in the wilderness, unlike that that just sustained them for a season and then they went on and died. I am the bread of life. And if you share in me, you will never die. You can't quite perceive it yet. Jesus says, but it will be God's greatest offering and it will be enough. Then I imagine that he took the bread that was on that table and he gave thanks to God. And he shared it with his disciples and he offered them his life. And he offered it to us too. And I imagine that he took a cup filled with wine from the meal that they had just been sharing. And he gave thanks to God and then he passed it around to them, offering him the blood, them the blood of his life and offering it to us as well. And friends, the very next day, he was lifted up on the cross. And we know that it was enough. Die, die, new. Die, die, new. Gracious God, just as the disciples heard Christ's words of promise and began to eat the bread and drink the wine in the suffering of a long remembrance and in the joy of a hope, grant that we would hear your words spoken and expressed in everyday things throughout our lives. And coffee on our table in the morning. And a simple gesture of opening a door and going out into the world free. The shouts of children in the parks. And a familiar song sung to us, even by an unfamiliar face. And a tree that gives us shade as the sun rises. Oh God, may the simple things speak to us of your mercy. And may they remind us that life with you is so good. And as we enter into this time of communion, may we remember all those who don't receive what is on this table who have their lives cut short every day by lack of food, who find themselves confined to the hospital, the prison, the assisted living facility, the children who wonder if they'll even have shoes this season, or who in whose eyes we can see is no hope, God, help us to remember 
that just as Christ was sacrificed, we have the opportunity to participate in the saving grace of that sacrifice. We have the opportunity to help those who are suffering and to extend this table of more than enough with the world. And knowing that and trusting that this day, we pray with confidence in the way that your Son, our Savior Jesus, taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If you are here this morning, I want to invite you to get out your communion elements to have them somewhere nearby, probably in your lap is a good place if that is a way that you can do it. Just like we did the last time that we were outside together, I'm gonna ask that you hold those out in front of you uh, once you have prepared them and I will guide you as we go together uh, through the liturgy as to how we are going to consume the elements. If for any reason you don't have communion elements today, there are extras uh, over on the table and you are invited to go and get those now if you need. remind you this day that Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love them, who earnestly repent of their sin and who seek to live in peace with God and with one another. And so on this morning that we are sharing together, we remember that not only does Christ but he wants us to experience what these elements mean. The great sacrifice that Christ made on our behalf, yes, but also the many ways that God was working throughout the history of the world to bring that to fruition. The way that even from creation to the Garden of Eden when we made some choices that we shouldn't have, to the Israelite slavery, to the Egyptians, to the freedom through the Red Sea, to the prophets and those who guided us during exile, to God who came in Jesus and who saved us of our sins. All of that God was doing throughout history so that we might have a relationship with God and we might get to share in his bread of life that he would offer. Eternity in praise and worship of him. And so on that night when the disciples thought they had just gathered to remember God's freedom in Egypt those many years ago, Jesus began to do something a little differently. He took the bread that was on the table and he raised it to God in heaven and he broke that bread and he gave it to his disciples who had gathered and he said, take and eat. This is my body which was given for you. Every time that you eat of this bread, do it in remembrance of me. And after the supper, Jesus took the cup and sometimes I like to imagine that it was the cup he had been drinking from throughout the meal. 
And he gave thanks to God for it. And he gave it to those disciples, those closest friends, and he said, take and drink. This is my blood of a new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of your sins. Every time that you drink of this cup, do it in remembrance of me. And in that moment, even though the disciples couldn't perceive it yet, Jesus was doing something. Amen. Friends, I want to invite you to take your bread, just your bread this morning, and to hear these words. This is the body of Christ that was given for you and for me. Would you consume it at this time together? I want to invite you to take your juice and to hear these words, this is the blood of Christ that was given for you and for me. Let us drink it together. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery that we cannot even physically understand. And yet this holy mystery in which we know that you are giving yourself to us. Now grant that we may go forth into the world this day to give ourselves for others in your goodness and in your name. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I will remind you as we move into our closing hymn this day, that the bread and the juice that you now have has been blessed. It is sacramental. It has been sanctified by the Holy Spirit. So I just ask that you do what we typically do when we clean up from communion in the sanctuary. And that is we do not put our bread or our juice down the sink. We don't throw it in a trash can because it is holy. We take it outside and we break it apart and we give it back to the earth. Out of our gratitude and our goodness, and our thankfulness for what God has done for us. So I invite you to do that, uh, to participate in that practice as you go home this day. <clears throat> Would you join us as we sing together one of the great hymns of the faith, one that we know is our desire and our prayer this day. When we all get to heaven, would you join us? Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place when we joy it was to worship out here on the lawn together to see so many of you gathered uh, and bringing your communion and sharing in this special time with us and it is my earnest prayer 
that you would go forth from this place knowing that you are loved and you are cherished by Almighty God. That the sacrifice that he made on your behalf, it was enough. Die angel. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.